Yes, we would look at how the code is compiled and how it is stored and how it gets executed by the controller and while we try and understand that we'd be knowing uh, what exactly the architecture of the controller means and how it works so uh, let's get started so uh, whenever you write a C code the C code gets I mean compiled and then it gets stored in a memory called flash on a microcontroller so, uh, so you probably you would have heard people saying that I need to flash the controller. So what they mean is they want to transfer the code that they have written to the flash memory of the controller. Now it will be very specific in this because it gives a lot of insights uh, when you are dealing with a specific controller. Now for the entire series we will be talking about the 80 mega 32 so the flash on this particular device is you know as the name suggests it's uh, 32 kilo bytes okay so this is the flash now there are two important features of the flash so whatever code you'll write it stays in there so even if you turn off the controller and turn it on back again uh, it still stays there so and the second thing is it can be reprogrammed okay so you can write it uh, erase it and write it again so by uh, by this we mean that this flash is programmable so uh, what that actually does in real world is uh, you know the controllers uh, they come with a certain set of features like the memory um, and the i o pins and other things and then this uh, can be used to uh, use to do a wide number of tasks or wide number of applications so these makes the controllers uh, pretty famous and is used in whole lot of electronic devices you now so uh, so the, speaking about the flash so uh, the atmega32 uh, data sheet it specifies that you can store uh, the data on this flash memory for uh, 20 years and you can reprogram it that is erase it and program it some 10,000 times so uh, that is uh, pretty good for this flash now so we have that and then uh, what what else we have is uh, I mean there's a register in the uh, controller and there are a whole bunch of these so we'll be looking at mm, at a few few of them in this uh, tutorial so the first I'd like to speak about is uh, the is the program counter so this 8-bit uh, little resistor what it does is it points to the first instruction on the microcontroller so and this is called the program counter or the PC okay so this uh, it, this points to the first location on the microcontroller and whenever that instruction gets executed it increments and points to the next location so this is a kind of uh, it, it goes through the entire flash I mean or till uh, till the code is present so whatever code you write it comes and sets into the flash in the program counter it keeps pointing to the uh, instructions that you have in the program now so uh, these instructions that you have uh, these need to be decoded I mean we need to determine what to do with these instructions and there is an instruction register uh, inside the controller to which these instructions uh, come so whenever the program counter points to a particular instruction uh, it comes to the instruction register now uh, we need to decode these instructions and uh, to do that there is one more resistor called the decode resistor yes as you would have guessed so uh, this is the decode resistor now what goes on after this could be a little fuzzy but I would uh, you know I would request you to stay here and see what what actually happens so this uh, it generates uh, control uh, it, it generates after the instruction is decoded it generates a whole lot of uh, control signals as to what to do with that 
particular instruction. So let us say that there is a control unit that determines what to what is to be done uh, when the instruction is decoded. Now, so let us leave this part apart. So what you should understand here is whatever code you write, it gets stored in the flash, then it is uh, decoded by the resistors and then it gives uh, instructions or you know, there is a control unit which handles as to what needs to be done on that particular instruction. Now let us move to the other side where the actual execution happens. Now with controllers you know that the center of the universe for this controllers is the um, arithmetic and logic unit. So if you have uh, you know, gone through one of our videos we discuss in depth what this actually does. So uh, it performs uh, a set of arithmetic as well as logical uh, instructions. Now uh, arithmetic instructions that this controller is does is very simple. I mean it could be addition, subtraction, uh, multiplication, division and then logical operations like the AND, OR, NOR and all that stuff. Okay so uh, what this uh, ALU is is it's a 8-bit ALU so it takes data in chunks of 8 bits or uh, a byte so uh, it takes data and that data uh, that it processes it usually comes from a set of general purpose resistors now uh, the the resistor that we see that we discussed earlier these were uh, the specific resistors so these are also called the special function resistors and the resistors from which the ALU gets data they are called the general purpose resistors now it gets uh, the ALU gets two inputs from two of the resistors and then processes that data and uh, gives it back now uh, whatever that goes on it goes on to the data bus so you have a data bus that handles all the data that comes into or out of the controller so we have a data bus like this and the processor is called the 8-bit processor because uh, the ALU is 8-bit the uh, data bus inside is 8-bit and uh, you know so uh, all the operations that take place the I mean it, it happens on uh, 8 bit so this is uh, 8 bit data bus so okay so this is the data bus and again uh, as I said the data might not always come from the general purpose uh, resistors so it could also come from a RAM or a random access memory so it's usually called the static RAM and this is a temporary storage device uh, uh, storage device on the, the controller the data on this is not permanent so when the controller turns off all the data gets vanished now why do we need this so this is kind of local storage for the computer so uh, whenever you declare variables or arrays in your program all these variables are either stored in the general purpose registers or on the static RAM now how much do we have on the controller like say for Atmega32 uh, we have 2 kilobytes of SRAM so this uh, if compared to you know the the modern processors or controllers this is pretty uh, small but but the beauty of this thing is you have a grasp of all the things which are small and then uh, you can understand how exactly all of these units work. So we have uh, SRAM again for you know temporary storage of data. So this is again connected to the data bus. Similarly, the uh, general purpose resistors are connected to data bus. What that means is uh, data that comes into the ALU, it could uh, come from static RAM to general purpose resistors and then to ALU, it processes it back and keeps it on the data bus. Now, now what uh, needs to be performed? It's determined by the instruction that is decoded. So, uh, so this control unit it's connected to all of the units, and it gives signals as to what needs to be performed or what operation needs to be done. So, this is connected everywhere. So, 
Now, apart from this, on a controller, you usually find a memory which stores uh, the data permanently. So, uh, that memory it's called the EEPROM, and uh, what this does is, uh, and by the way, this is one more point. So, when we are talking about uh, risk processors. Uh, so it is uh, reduced instruction set computers so and what that means is there is a separate memory for the code so the code uh, stays in here and there is a separate memory for the data so the data st stays in the static RAM or the general purpose uh, resistors and or the EEPROM so EEPROM basically uh, I mean to tell you a concrete example like say we have a system which is live in the field and we want to monitor temperature or other variables and then uh, keep those uh, stored permanently in real time so uh, so the program it treats temperatures and then it needs to store the data permanently on the chip so there's no way that we can store it in the flash so uh, what we need is we need some kind of permanent storage memory which stays even if the power goes off and that memory is EEPROM for us and then uh, this is again limited the EEPROM in a microcontroller like, like the AVR is <coughs> is one kilobytes so uh, this is again connected to the 8-bit data bus all right, so now this would not complete a microcontroller because whatever happens, we store the instructions, these are executed, and then uh, it remains inside the controller. So what we need, apart from all this, is a few other units, like say the I.O. ports. So uh, on a controller, you have a controller like the Atmega32, it has uh, four ports, four I.O. ports, and each port has four pins so in total you have four into eight which is 32 input output pins and uh, these could again be you know as discussed earlier this could be analog or digital so uh, digital by digital we mean you can send and receive one or zero and by analog we mean that you can connect a sensor uh, which gives analog output and that is processed by an internal ADC and that comes into that data comes into the controller so we have IO ports on a controller similarly uh, controller has various other units that uh, that are pretty handy so uh, the other unit is a timer uh, slash counter so this unit is basically used to keep count of objects or you know count time so we'll see that uh, later in detail we'll have a lot of uh, examples on using timers now there are again uh, units which uh, which uh, help in execution of the code uh, like the interrupt controller or the interrupts so uh, these are pretty handy uh, things and we'll be discussing them uh, in depth later and also uh, the controller supports a wide uh, range of protocols so uh, these protocols are a way to communicate uh, with other devices so these could be uh, SPI uh, UART uh, or I2C so we'll see all these uh, later uh, when we are interfacing other uh, you know devices like the external memories LCDs uh, sensors um, and a whole lot of things that work on these protocols so uh, this is a uh, general overview of the architecture and how it works so in the next video we'll see in detail uh, what each of these uh, units are composed of 